Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alicia and today I'm going to go through my May wrap up. In May I read 12 books which I'm pretty happy about. One of them was a picture book but I'm still going to count it. But even without that picture book this is the highest amount of books I have read in a month so far this year and I think including that picture book I have hit 35 books I believe. I'm either at 34, 35, or 36 and 35 books is the total number of books that I read in all of 2022 so this year has been a much better reading year and I'm pretty happy about that as well. So let's get into it in the order that I read these books. The first book that I read in May was The Last to Vanish by Megan Miranda. This book takes place in a town in like ooh, North Carolina I want to say over there in like the Appalachian Appalachian mountains area and this town is one of the most dangerous towns in the state and in the country because it's kind of notorious for people going there and going missing but it is also right next to the Appalachian trail so this book opens up with like this discussion of is it actually someone who's making these people go missing or is it all hikers going missing on this trail that like is known to be slightly dangerous right things happen when you're on a trail like that doing a through hike but this is a mystery thriller book about these disappearances and i enjoyed it a lot actually there was a couple issues i had with it with like reveals and characterization that I won't speak too much to those issues that I had because they would be kind of spoilery but there's just a couple issues that I had but honestly not that many and overall I thought this book was pretty good and it made me want to check out more of Megan Miranda's writing like this felt very much like what I want from a thriller that I'm going to read quickly and not going to think too much about. It 100% delivered on what I wanted. The next book I read was Dele Wed's Destiny by Tomi Abaro. This is a book I just found at a thrift store. I just saw it on the shelf and I was like that cover looks amazing. So I read the synopsis and I was like this sounds interesting. So I brought it home and read it. And this book follows like this group of four women who all graduate college together and then they are reuniting in the future for the wedding of destiny one of the daughters of one of these women or three women not four women three women and i enjoyed this book a decent amount the only issue i had with this book was how long we spend in flashbacks and it felt very much like they were not distributed correctly and then the main storyline felt kind of weak because we spent so long in flashbacks and I think it was kind of split between wanting to tell the story in the past and the story in the present and then both of them kind of felt lacking to me because of just the way they were interwoven together that I personally didn't love but I still really enjoyed this book I just wish we had spent a little bit less time in those flashbacks and made the present storyline a little bit more prominent in this book the next book I read in May was Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Acho this book was interesting I would not say that it made me uncomfortable because this was not the first book I have read in the vein of anti-racism and trying to learn about experiences that are not like my own as a white woman in this country. So there was nothing in here that was new to me. However, I did still find some parts that were interesting. As you can maybe see, I put tabs on the books for some of the like the more interesting quotes or parts but like I said I don't think anything in here truly made me uncomfortable the way it would have if this had been the first book I read starting anti-racism learning 
So for me, this means this is a great place to start and I have recommended it to other people who maybe haven't done other reading or their reading has not been and they're learning about anti-racism and experiences other than their own as white people has not been in this format. Maybe it's been in a different format, but I think this is a really good place to start as like the primer, the first one you do, the like the thing that gets those cogs turning. The chapters are very short. They do not go super in depth. And it's kind of like, I view it almost like a 101 book. And I think it's well done and I enjoyed it, I guess. I always have a hard time using the word enjoy with books like this, but there were parts I found interesting and there were still things I learned and I am happy I read it. Um, I think it added a nice extra facet to everything else I have already read, but I think optimal use for this book would be if you haven't read anything else about anti-racism and you're starting fresh. The next book I read was Big Panda Tiny Dragon by James Norbury. This book feels very much like The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. Very much just like kind of doesn't have a storyline, kind of does. It's really cute illustrations and really poignant short lines or I think don't even think there was like a full paragraph in this book but is really really moving between the words the author does use and the art that they include. This book made me bawl my eyes out. I was sobbing. I got my copy that I read from the library and I am thinking I will need to buy myself a copy because it moved me so deeply and is something I definitely want to read again and would highly recommend. The art is amazing and like I said not necessarily much of a storyline but it is very 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 touching. The next book I read was Has Visto a Maria by Sandra Cisneros. This is a short little almost like a picture book but kind of like a picture book for adults that is about a cat that goes missing and this book is about loss and grief and I enjoyed it and I thought it was really touching as well and had some really good like nuggets of wisdom in this really short little book about a cat. Then I read Death by Dumpling by Vivian Chen. This is the first book in a cozy mystery series that I found through my library's suggested reading for AAPI month. This cozy mystery takes place in a noodle shop and this noodle shop is in like a strip mall that's almost like a mini Chinatown. And this mystery kicks off when the owner of this strip mall is killed by a dumpling that came from the restaurant that the main character works in and that her parents own. I thought it was a pretty good first book, a pretty interesting first installment in a new to me cozy mystery series and I probably will continue on with the series but it did have its downsides. There were some moments where I felt like the writing was a little weak which in some ways is par for the course for cozy mysteries. Maybe it sounds awful but I don't expect that much from the writing but this also felt a little bit like first book syndrome right. I expect the writing to get better as I go along in the series but overall I liked the characters and was intrigued enough by them and by the writing style to think I'm, I'm gonna continue on with the series but it might not become my new favorite cozy mystery series. The next book I read was Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dorr. This book I picked up just because it was available at my library and I'd heard so much about it and I had a lot of mixed feelings like I didn't love the historical aspect of it but I enjoyed some of the like current time and future time aspects of it. So basically this book follows multiple different timelines. There's like a past, present, and future and all of them center around this old Greek story which honestly I'm not even sure if it's a real old Greek story or if Anthony Dorr, Dorr, Anthony Dorr made it up for 
this book. I didn't love the old Greek story. I don't necessarily love Greek mythology. It's just not one of my interests. So I'm not quite sure where I picked up this book, but I did and I enjoyed it more than I should have based on the synopsis and looking back at the book. The elements of the book are definitely things that I normally wouldn't enjoy, like with the historical aspect and things like that. But overall, I did like the book because the present day and the future really pulled through and, and made it something that I was interested in. That all being said, I have some bones to pick. One main one, which is I hated how one of the reveals in this book was handled. I think it was grossly mishandled and I am offended. I'm offended that he would choose to do it this way, honestly. It felt like it almost, I don't want to say cheapened the, the reveal, but the reveal was handled in such a way that was like not done well and kind of took away a lot of the tension of the reveal for me. And I think if he had done it differently, the stakes in this book could have been so much higher. But I might be the only person that feels this way because everyone else I've heard talk about this book has absolutely loved it and given it no notes. So maybe I'm the only one who had an issue with how some of the reveals were, were handled in this book. I also talk more about this book in my recent reading vlogs so go check those out if you want more and more rambly thoughts. Then I read Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This follows a Chinese American teenager in San Francisco in the 1950s who is also a lesbian and it is about the racism and homophobia of the time and it follows her as she kind of explores and learns about this place called the Telegraph Club. I'm honestly not sure what to say about this book. I loved this book. It was amazing. I think it was really well done. I can't think of anything I particularly disliked or would give notes on for this book. Um, just off the top of my head, having finished it a little while ago, I really, really enjoyed this book. And it was another book I read this month that I think had a, a decent impact on me emotionally, which is maybe why I don't have that much to say about like criticisms or things I didn't like about the book because I felt very emotionally connected to the characters and really liked it. Next I read Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. This is the second book in the Expanse series and I don't even know if I can tell you what the Expanse is about besides it's sci-fi there's space war things happening. I think in the first book it starts with the main character James Holden and his crew finding a ship where everyone has died and then they make an announcement and this kicks off a huge intergalactic event and war and things ensue. So this is the second installment and I had such mixed feelings about this book and I might DNF this series because I kind of hated this book. I finished it but I kind of hated it. I held on for a couple of the characters that I actually cared what they were doing but every time we would read from a different character's perspective I wanted to gouge my eyes out. The characters in this book do not feel well developed. This is not a character driven book. I do not think these characters are likable in any any way, like not likable in that they're good characters or well written and then also just they are unlikable. Like if you met these people in real life you would probably dislike them because they are all terrible people. Not all of them but there's a decent amount of characters in this book where you're like you're just a bad person and reading from your point of view isn't fun because you're a bad person and you're a poorly written bad person. So I can't even revel in like good writing. I am gonna cut myself off there and say, if you want more ranting and rambling about this book and all of the conflicted emotions I had about it, go check out my most recent reading vlogs. I ramble, 
so much about this book, so much that I had to split what was supposed to be one vlog into two. I had too many thoughts, but I'm not going to spew them all here. Next, I read Light from Uncommon Stars by Raika Aoki. This book has been on my list for a very long time, and I picked it up finally this month. And I really liked this book. It follows a young girl, a teenage girl named Katrina, as she runs away from home. She plays violin and makes friends with someone named Shizuka Shitomi, who has been selling souls to hell to get her own soul back. I really enjoyed this book and as a musician I really identified with Katrina when she talks about the worries and anxieties and fears of performing and potentially not being accepted for the music you make. This book was one I was really excited about because the genre is listed as science fiction and there is sci-fi elements in this book but they were so unnecessary and they felt just like plot conveniences. It was a little hard for me to find the justification for those sci-fi elements when they would just kind of swoop in and save the day or make the situation easier and it felt almost auxiliary to the main story. So I think this story was really good but could have been even better if those elements had been removed. The sci-fi elements I want to be a separate story. Like I just want that story but I don't want them to be combined. The next book I read was The Fourth Suit by Neil Patrick Harris. This is the fourth book in his Magic Misfits series which is a middle grade series that follows this group of magician kids in a town called Mineral Wells and the shenanigans and trouble they get into as they're trying to defeat the bad guy magician villain. I wasn't sure if I was gonna read this book but then I realized it was the last book in the series and it was only like six hours long so I was like I'll just finish it out, complete the series. It was a cute series but very middle grade. I think it has some good lessons for children but it isn't necessarily a middle grade that I would say is like super great and all adults should read it. There is also magic tricks like sprinkled in throughout the book where Neil Patrick Harris will step away from the story to specifically teach magic tricks and that is something that personally I could have done without because I don't really care but I'm sure it is fun for the children. The last book I read was a picture book called The Good Egg by Jory John and I read this as I was sitting in my therapist's office waiting. I got to my appointment a little early, saw this picture book, picked it up and read it, and included it on this list. I don't normally include if I read a picture book, but I've definitely seen some commentary online about how you should, and I agree with it because all reading is reading and picture books count. Also, super great hack for increasing your book count of books you have read. I don't have a whole lot to say about this picture book. It is about an egg who is a good egg and wants to help people. And I think it was in my therapist's office because the message of the book is sometimes helping yourself is the best way you can help other people. I thought this book was cute and fun and it was a great way to spend a couple of minutes while I was waiting for my therapist. And that is everything I read in May. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books. We can chat about them, especially if you've read Caliban's War, because even though I have ranted about it multiple times, I still want to rant about it more. So we can discuss in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!